Well, Blackmagic Design just blew my mind once again with the announcement of the Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro, which I am going to just call the Pocket 6K Pro from here on out because that is quite the mouthful to say. Now, I don't typically make reaction videos to camera announcements and stuff. And, and mainly because I, I usually like to get a camera in that I'm going to review and talk about um, to get some real world experience with it and test it um, firsthand and, and kind of get a good idea, get a feel of the camera, uh, how the sensor reacts, frame, all that kind of stuff, frame rates, whatever, uh, to kind of give a, a, a good review and, and a, a, a video on the camera. However, because the Pocket 6K Pro is pretty much just a, a hardware upgrade to the Pocket 6K, which I have extensive experience on the Pocket 6K in the Pocket 4K and the Ursa Mini Pro G2 on a number of different projects. So I feel like with, with that experience, I can kind of talk about the, Im the improvements that I'm really excited about. And that's kind of just what I, I want to talk about in this video, just the improvements I'm excited about. So I'm going to try to breeze through these just because I'm going to talk about these definitely in uh, my full review when I get the camera in and get to test it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I just, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm really excited about this camera. So um, I just wanted to make this video and, and share my excitement with, with all of you lovely people watching this video. So I'm going to try to breeze through these um, just to make it short, but um, just talk about some of the things that I'm really excited about and just kind of my perspective on some of these things. So the first thing is, is kind of an odd one and not a lot of people are talking about it, but it's the fact that it has two tripod mounting points on the bottom of the camera. Now I'm almost positive they're a quarter 20, but I'm, I'm not sure, but they look like they're a quarter 20. The benefit there is you have uh, the ability to put two tripod screws on the same tripod plate. And the benefit there is it prevents the camera from uh, twisting and swiveling and all that kind of stuff, especially when you're running a camera on a gimbal or something like that, or, or even a tripod. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Having the ability to use two tripod mounting screws makes it just a much more secure connection. And I just feel, a heck of a lot better about it and especially on a on a gimbal it's just so annoying when that tripod plate starts um, twisting and, and that tripod screw starts backing out so really 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 excited to have that and a lot of these improvements really i should have mentioned are, are so many improvements that like you almost don't even have to rig the camera out and cage the camera out to 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 make it useful which is kind of the case with the pocket 4k and pocket 6k because you really need an external monitor external NDs, all that kind of stuff. And the Pocket 6K Pro kind of improves on all of those things to the point where it's it's almost a, a perfect camera right out of the box. So anyways, I digress. The next thing I'm really excited about are the built-in NDs. And they're, yeah, it's just so amazing to have built-in NDs. It's one of the reasons why I bought the Ursa Mini Pro G2 as my main camera, because it has built-in NDs. And just like on the Ursa Mini Pro G2, it has IR cut NDs, which are really nice. Now you have you have clear two, four, and six stops of ND. And the reason why IR cut is really important is because the higher up of NDs you go on the Blackmagic cameras, well, really any camera, the more the camera sensor is susceptible to IR pollution. Now, most cameras, a lot of cameras out there have an IR, have IR filtration in front of the sensor. However, most Blackmagic cameras, actually, I don't think any Blackmagic camera has an IR filter in front of the sensor with the exception of on the NDs. Now, one thing I don't know is if the clear ND, if that tray actually has an IR filtration in it or not, because some people may want to use their own ND system out there with their matte box, whatever the case may be. Um, so with that, if that's the case, it'd be nice if there's IR filtration in front of the, the clear ND slot, but I'm not sure if it's just a clear tray or if whatever so anyways but two four and six stops i'm really excited for that and uh, for the most part on on the ursa mini pro g2 six stops has been plenty of nd for me i've never had an, a situation where i've needed more nd uh, unless i'm like shooting at like f1.4 in super bright conditions but at that point um i'll just i'll just go up to f28 i mean it's really not that big of a deal to me. So uh, yeah, six stops is plenty. Now the next thing is the screen. This is such a huge improvement over the previous iterations of the Pocket 4, or the Pocket 4K and Pocket 6, well I guess the original Pocket camera too, and the original cinema camera. Anyways, the uh, the screen, it tilts a little bit. Now it doesn't flip out like vlogger style, but I don't really care about that. My main gripe with the camera was the fact that it didn't do any kind of articulation. Now it articulates where you can see it from really low angle shots, really high angle shots, all that kind of good stuff. And uh, it's also 1500 nits of brightness. So 
uh, really bright. My 702 Touch from Small HD is uh, 15, I'm pretty sure it's 1500 nits. And I've, I don't think I've ever run into an issue where I couldn't see uh, what what I was, I couldn't actually see my monitor because of reflections and stuff. I think like in high noon, it's, it's an issue, but for the most part, 1500 nits is plenty bright. And the next thing that I'm really excited about with regards to not being able to see it in bright daylight is the fact that they came out with this cute little EVF that mounts onto the top of the camera. And uh, that's pretty exciting because uh, number one, it gives you a third point in contact uh, for for stabilization, especially if you're trying to be like super uh, inconspicuous and, and low profile, maybe shooting a doc or documentary or something like that, um, you get extra stabilization and it just kind of looks like you're taking a picture because the camera kind of looks like a DSLR. So you can kind of go into go into locations where you may not have uh, have that option with like an Ursa or a, a Red or or an Ari or something like that. And the other thing is in bright daylight conditions where the monitor may not. Uh, be bright enough in bright sunlight, you can use that EVF and you'll have no issues seeing uh, what you're recording because that that EVF is, uh, is, a, is a viewfinder and it's completely shaded. It's got these eye cups and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, I digress. The only thing I'm really concerned, or not concerned, I, I'm curious about with this EVF is the actual, uh, the mounting or the, the connection. I, at first glance, I thought it was HDMI, but when I was looking at it again, it didn't quite look like HDMI. I'm not sure if it's a different kind of HDMI or, or, or what, but um, I'd be really interested to know if it's like a, a, a mini HDMI or a micro, I'm not really sure which one, or if it's proprietary. And if it is proprietary, if there's a way to, to maybe get like some kind of adapter or something to use that as a second monitor out, say for a wireless transmission system or something like that. And then on top of that, what the actual resolution of that output would be. So I don't know, more to come on that. Um, again, I'm, I couldn't really find if, if it was actually HDMI for some kind of proprietary connection. But based on the looks of it, it does look like it is a proprietary connection. So more to come on that. Um, I'll try to do a little bit more research and get back to you on that, but I am kind of interested in that. All right, next up is Gen 5 Color built into the camera. I'm super excited about this. They have an update also coming to the other cameras, see the Pocket 4K and 6K. I hope it comes to the Ursa G2 as well to get Gen 5 Color in the camera. And the benefit there is um, if you don't record in Blackmagic RAW, if for some reason you record in ProRes, to get Gen 5 Color in ProRes, which I'm pretty sure you're gonna be able to do on the Pocket 6K Pro, has massive benefits because if you're shooting for a client and you're just delivering the footage and they just want ProRes footage for editing, uh, you can deliver that ProRes footage with Gen 5 Color. And then the other benefit is being able to monitor with a Gen 5, an optimized LUT for Gen 5 Color, like the buttery LUTs have all the all the Gen 5 uh, LUTs now, and being able to monitor what that same LUT they're going to be grading with on set is super nice, and, and you can kind of give a client monitor uh, with that LUT displayed to kind of give them an idea what the what the final look is going to look like. So the next thing is uh, uh, 4K in Blackmagic RAW. I saw this in the spec sheet. I'm not sure if this was a typo or if this is actually coming to the camera, but if it is, I'm really excited. Um, now, one thing is it probably is going to crop in on the sensor as opposed to how the 12K, uh, the 12K sensor works. Um, I, because I think this is the same sensor as the Pocket 6K. I think you're gonna get a crop in on 4K and I'm not sure what the, off the top of my head, what, what the crop would be or all that stuff, but it is gonna crop in on the sensor. However, for like sports and wildlife, there actually is a benefit to that. And if they give us like a, a two, four, one aspect ratio, then maybe they can squeeze out some more frames per second like they did on the Pocket 4K and they gave us 75 frames per second. So more to come on that. But the next thing that I'm really excited for is uh, the Q1 and Q3 uh, recording modes, the constant quality. Q1, Q3, before it was just Q0 and Q5. And it kind of makes me wonder if they may add 18 to one compression on the Pocket 6K Pro and maybe the other cameras as well, because um, yeah, that might just be helpful for especially SD card recording or uh, even just longer form content where you need to, you know, roll for, you know, a couple hours at a time maybe or something uh, for in 6K for whatever reason. So um, maybe wildlife, I don't know, but um, it's cool to, to get 18 to one compression, uh, but having a Q3, Q1 and Q3 is a good middle ground for, um, you know, you don't have to go all the way up to Q5, you don't have to go all the way to Q0 uh, for maximum data, but Q, Q1 and Q3 is good, a good middle ground for, um, 
for for some some situations. And the last thing is the batteries. I'm really excited that they changed the batteries from the LPE6 to the NPF style batteries, the 550, 570. I think that's the same thing. Um, now, I don't think that we're going to actually get much more of an improvement on battery life because the screen is brighter, so that is gonna be pulling more juice. However, these NPF batteries are really affordable and you can find them all over the place. And the, the one thing that I'm gonna test and that I'm curious about is the consistency of runtime and reliability and quality between these batteries and if they all communicate battery percentage uh, to the camera. Uh, I did have an issue with some LPE6 batteries, third-party ones that just were either really terrible, like the Wasabi ones were just absolutely awful. And some of them just didn't even show um, percentage remaining. So I'd, I'd be curious to see if pretty much any and all NPF batteries out there will uh, give you time remaining and have consistent run time and all that kind of good stuff. Well, this video has probably gone on way too long. So um, I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm really excited for this camera. For me, it's gonna be a fantastic B camera to the Ursa Mini Pro G2. It's gonna be a great gimbal camera. Um, and it's gonna be like my new travel camera. So anyways, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. When I get the camera in, I'm gonna make a, a full review and, and all that good stuff and uh, talk about it and all of its goodness. But in the meantime, thank you for watching this video. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day or evening or whatever time of the day it is. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Maybe consider hitting that subscribe button and let me down, out, know down in the comments below if you're still here, if, you, uh, if you're gonna pick up a Pocket 6K Pro and why. So. Um, Anyways, guys, thank you, and gals, thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.